All right, sorry for the delay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Paweł Wieczorek. I work at Samsung R&D Institute Poland. Uh, currently, I am involved in release engineering process for uh, Tizen Linux distribution, uh, created specially for uh, embedded Linux uh, devices. I work uh, with uh, the common profile, which is targeted at, uh, we, uh, and its target is to um, provide a uh, um, simple Linux distribution for as many target devices as possible. Today, uh, I would like to uh, talk to you about uh, um, our automated testing laboratory, a project which we started almost a year ago, and uh, how it evolved, uh, what it is uh, right now. I will start with a short introduction of our solution. Then I will describe uh, to you what drove us to creating uh, such a laboratory. I will also present uh, what we did automate and uh, how we did it. And then I'll share uh, with you our to-do list, uh, what is still yet to be done. Uh, I will uh, end this with a short summary and uh, conclusions. So uh, to introduce uh, our solution, this is how, it, uh, how the basic unit of our automated testing laboratory looks like. It consists of uh, multiple uh, single board computers, which we use as target devices for Tizen Common uh, Linux distribution. It also has some uh, supporting uh, hardware, which I will describe in depth later. As you can see, all the uh, SBCs, single board computers, are um, in uh, groups of a few, are uh, multiple mainly be, uh, to have them redundant. If uh, any hardware failure occurs, there is always possibility that uh, the other one uh, is still working. Uh, also, it allows us to uh, perform all the tests in parallel to make them faster, to get the results faster. Uh, also, if uh, there is a failure in tests, we uh, always redo them on the other uh, SBC, just to make sure that uh, test failure uh, wasn't uh, it, it that it's not a hardware's uh, fault. Unfortunately, uh, once uh, the uh, whole unit of uh, testing laboratory gets ho hooked up, it doesn't look as pretty. Uh, it looks uh, more like this uh, once we uh, put all the cables uh, in the right places. But uh, for now, let's get back to the pretty picture and let me describe in depth what we've got here. Uh, to test on uh, Intel-based architectures, we use uh, MinoBoard Turbots. Uh, back when we uh, started the project, we used uh, MinoBoard Maxis, which are almost in any way compatible uh, between these two uh, versions. Uh, they are compatible with uh, uh, mounting holes, with uh, uh, ports uh, placement, and uh, of course, uh, with uh, architecture we test on. They also allow us to perform tests on both uh, uh, 64-bit Intel architecture as, uh, and uh, 32. It is uh, uh, changing it is as easy as replacing uh, EFI. Uh, to test on uh, ARMv7 architecture, we use Odroids uh, U3+. Uh, they are uh, pretty common, unfortunately no longer uh, manufactured, but uh, We've got a few pieces and uh, they are small. Uh, they have uh, lots of uh, commonly used ports and they uh, perform uh, great in our testing laboratory. As I mentioned before, uh, our target is to uh, provide support for as many architectures uh, as possible. So uh, 
we also added uh, ARM64 target devices and uh, currently high keys are uh, our uh, reference devices for uh, ARM64. As for supporting hardware, we of course have got two uh, USB hubs. These are just plain stock uh, boards uh, to, to hook uh, the whole setup up. Also, on the top and the bottom, we've got six uh, boards uh, of our custom design. These are micro SD card D multiplexers. Uh, and uh, I will describe them in depth uh, shortly. Uh, these devices uh, up close look like uh, this and allow us to share uh, access to the uh, micro SD cards between uh, testing host and uh, target device being under test. Once you uh, know uh, how it uh, looks like, let me tell you what drove us to uh, creating such, uh, such a solution. And uh, to make it uh, entirely clear, I would like to describe to you uh, shortly how does uh, release engineer uh, work look like at uh, Tizen Linux distribution. So first of all, uh, a software developer uh, clones git repository from our uh, Garrett uh, server. Uh, developer makes uh, changes and pushes them back to Garrett uh, server for the review. Once uh, the review is done and reviewer, uh, both reviewer and developer is happy, are happy with uh, given patch, uh, integrator uh, takes his uh, role and merges a uh, given patch to the repository. And that's not all uh, that uh, integrator's uh, work is all about, because then integrator should create a submit request, which is then processed by us, by release engineers. A submit request uh, is uh, and, and information that uh, we should include new version of software uh, in uh, releases of uh, Tizen distribution for all the target devices. And such submit request is then processed by our Jenkins server uh, to the open build service for uh, Tizen.org, where uh, all the uh, software that is patched and not only it, but also all its dependencies are being rebuilt uh, and uh, RPM packages are created. Once this is done, a new image uh, of the distribution is created and, uh, and, and is available for further testing. And this is where uh, release engineers uh, take uh, control. This is where uh, we uh, start uh, our testing. As you can see, most of uh, the uh, workflow is already uh, fully automated. Uh, Jenkins server and OBS work uh, fully independently. The images that are being produced, uh, they required some manual work in order to uh, be sure that new change that was uh, submitted uh, can be uh, accepted or, uh, or if it should be rejected uh, because it uh, introduces some regression or, or simply uh, fails to build uh, for, for a given release. Our work is based mainly or, uh, on two uh, tools, uh, which I already mentioned, on uh, Open Build Service Server and on Jenkins. Uh, our uh, automated testing laboratory had to be uh, created uh, based on those uh, two technologies. Uh, we've tried alternative solutions, but uh, these uh, worked best so far. Uh, they are well known, they are pretty stable, and uh, 
they suit most of our needs. And how do we use them? Uh, first of all, if uh, OBS uh, shows up that there is a build failure, we should investigate it and uh, check for possible solution. Uh, we also check uh, if uh, new images work properly on all target devices or whether it uh, introduced some regressions. Also, uh, once uh, we uh, gather all the information, uh, we then may uh, approve inclusion of uh, verified changes. But uh, this takes a lot of time when, one, uh, when it is done manually, when it is done by hand by release engineers. Uh, it's mainly uh, caused by uh, multiplicity of target devices that we test on. Uh, we currently test only on a, a single uh, example of uh, given architecture, and since we uh, test on four of them, there are already uh, four, uh, four paths that uh, each new uh, change has to uh, pass in order to be included uh, in uh, Tizen release. As you can imagine, this work is pretty monotonous. Uh, it requires repeating uh, over and over again the same set of uh, instructions, the same set of uh, commands to be executed. But still, it requires a lot of focus because all the uh, test results uh, look pretty similar and uh, it requires uh, a good eye to catch uh, some differences between them. So we asked uh, ourselves, uh, maybe not all the uh, images created on submit requests should be uh, tested as thoroughly or maybe uh, just a few test cases uh, have to be checked on each one. Uh, we also uh, briefly considered uh, assumption that uh, maybe if the software builds, uh, it's, it's pretty good indicator that it, uh, it uh, works properly. Unfortunately, this is uh, not how we would like to uh, create uh, Linux distributions, uh, especially for uh, embedded uh, devices. Uh, we always try to resolve uh, all the defects uh, that we find as soon as possible. Uh, it is much harder to uh, find a reason of uh, such failure uh, if we checked uh, it uh, on, on rare occasions. Uh, we also tend to uh, look for a solution, not just uh, workaround. Uh, workarounds from our experience do backfire uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this is not the way uh, we uh, try to create uh, a Linux distribution. And most importantly, uh, we do not release software which was never tested on an uh, actual device. All the uh, images that are publicly uh, available at um, our download server uh, are, uh, were being uh, flashed onto target devices and are safely to use. So the only way to uh, make this whole process uh, easier for release engineers and to uh, release them actually from all this manual work was to automate the whole process. And that's, uh, what, that's actually what we did. What was uh, to be automated could be categorized uh, in, uh, in a uh, few uh, sets. First of all, uh, we had to uh, poll uh, servers uh, for uh, any change. Unfortunately, uh, OBS server does not uh, provide any event uh, system uh, for, for us to be notified once uh, a change occurs. We also had to uh, actually automate getting those images from the servers. But uh, the software 
uh, tasks were uh, pretty easy, pretty scriptable, so it didn't took, uh, take much time. As for uh, controlling uh, all the host uh, machines and target devices, uh, this required uh, a little bit uh, more work, but uh, more on that uh, shortly. As for publishing test results, which we uh, didn't want to keep for ourselves, but uh, we wanted them uh, to be shared with others uh, in case someone uh, does not believe uh, our uh, results and wants to reproduce them, we decided they should be publicly available to everyone. And uh, probably the uh, hardest uh, task for us was to uh, provide a unified way for flashing target devices uh, with uh, new images prior their publication. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, OBS, unfortunately, uh, in the version that is de deployed on uh, Tizen.org servers, uh, does not provide uh, any events. Uh, and uh, because of that, because of uh, it currently uh, is not best suited for uh, fully automated uh, mechanism, it uh, provided uh, more human-readable naming conventions, which uh, had to be parsed in order uh, for full automation of the process. Uh, what is more, uh, discovery of uh, all the new images had to be uh, made on multiple levels, as uh, um, currently images are not published all in one place, but are categorized uh, through uh, architectures, uh, display manager uh, variants, uh, target devices, uh, and so on. Fortunately, with uh, technology that we already uh, know uh, and uh, in most cases like, we could uh, make uh, Jenkins uh, to, to be able to work for us. And uh, tasks uh, such as scheduling or, uh, or queuing uh, New, new tests was uh, already made uh, for us by the Jenkins server. As for having uh, to communicate with all the devices, we considered uh, several uh, possibilities. First of all, we thought uh, about uh, SSH because uh, it, uh, mm, it is already uh, very popular, it provides uh, uh, many uh, features and it is a flexible solution. However, it depends on multiple services, uh, networking, uh, for example, and we didn't want such uh, dependency uh, for uh, our uh, communication with target devices. So we wanted uh, as little uh, as possible, uh, and since some of target devices do not provide uh, Ethernet port, uh, are, uh, some of them are only uh, equipped with uh, wireless communication, uh, we thought that uh, it would be better to find another solution. We also considered uh, Serial Console, which is uh, most popular at uh, embedded development. However, the rate of data transfer was uh, too low for, for our uh, needs, uh, and unfortunately this solution is not as flexible uh, as others. Since neither of them could be chosen, uh, we decided to fall back to the default uh, communication uh, protocol used in uh, Tizen development, which is smart the debug bridge, uh, uh, or um, SDB for short. SDB uh, provides us uh, with the best of uh, both worlds. Uh, it uh, requires only a uh, USB connection. Uh, it uh, depends on single service, which is uh, already uh, available at all Tizen uh, images. Uh, it is uh, pretty flexible, 
It provides uh, shell access, uh, remote command execution, uh, and file transfer. Once we uh, have that in place, uh, we also took care about uh, configuration management for our uh, test servers, for uh, our host machines. We started with uh, just providing a handbook in TestLab Handbook repository, but uh, we soon found out that this, this was not enough. Uh, changes made to the server uh, were, in, uh, were put in much faster pace uh, that we could update our uh, handbook. Uh, this is why we decided to uh, provide Ansible uh, playbooks for uh, storing configuration uh, of our uh, test servers uh, in TestLab host repositories. This way, uh, we were able to improve our deployments to have a rollback strategy, uh, and uh, since it is uh, already defined, uh, providing new nodes uh, to our uh, laboratory uh, is much faster, uh, much easier, and much more reliable than repeating set of instructions uh, over and over again. Uh, this way, we also got uh, rid of uh, servers uh, which were uh, configured by some person and uh, had some um, different uh, set of configuration. Uh, and uh, that's how uh, Snowflakes, which uh, is a name for those servers, uh, most common, were uh, removed from uh, our setup. But uh, having our internal infrastructure uh, in place wasn't the last task. We also had to work with our external infrastructure on uh, tizen.org servers. Mostly, we wanted to use it for result uh, publishing. And uh, since uh, Wiki uh, is already available at uh, tizen.org, we decided that it uh, might become a place for publishing our test results. It is uh, easily available to everyone. Uh, it provides a possibility of future reuse of uh, the test results we provide. Uh, and uh, since we didn't want to introduce uh, any new service uh, for uh, sharing our results, uh, we decided that it is the way to go. Uh, this way, we can uh, provide information uh, about our environment and uh, what we actually did with uh, everyone. And uh, all the test results uh, have the safe, safe place to be published. Uh, we also hope that uh, this data uh, can be used in future, for example, for um, statistical analysis on how uh, Tizen Linux distribution was improved. Uh, to do so, we use a great tool provided by MediaWiki, which is uh, PyWikiBot. PyWikiBot uh, provides easy uh, interface uh, in Python for uh, both reading and writing uh, to the um, wiki server. And uh, last, uh, we also had uh, to uh, overcome the problem of flashing. Uh, target devices. And uh, it was uh, not uh, an easy one. Uh, unfortunately, current ways, current set of tools uh, which uh, is used to uh, flash uh, new images onto uh, target devices uh, is focused on user interaction. Uh, it is also designed uh, for uh, not for platform developers, but rather for app developers, and uh, it uh, assumes that app developer only requires single uh, board uh, in his setup. So it is uh, not, uh, not well suited for having multiple devices connected uh, all at once. Also, uh, the procedure um, for flashing devices is uh, pretty architecture specific. There are different uh, sets of uh, tools, of commands to execute, 
uh, for each of uh, architecture we test on. Uh, this is why we uh, decided that uh, it should be uh, the way of flashing devices should be unified once and for all for uh, every uh, architecture we support uh, currently. And uh, we uh, found out that uh, all these uh, devices share a unique feature. Uh, they are bootable from uh, as micro SD cards. And uh, it is uh, currently, uh, I believe, uh, already a standard since not only uh, devices I, I mentioned uh, before, uh, high keys, or droids, uh, and uh, Mino boards are uh, suited to do so. Uh, many other more popular platforms such as uh, Raspberry Pis or uh, mm, different examples of uh, Odroids uh, and other single board computers also use uh, this, uh, this standard for uh, memory access. This is why we came up with uh, our design for uh, micro SD card T multiplexer. And uh, what you see here is actually uh, our second attempt at uh, creating such device. Uh, the first one uh, was uh, a little bigger. The first one uh, we thought that uh, was uh, early in the uh, beginning of the project. Uh, we thought that uh, maybe uh, SD, a regular SD uh, card would be better standard. Uh, we uh, soon found out that it is a dead end uh, and that we, uh, if we want to be as close to the actual hardware that will be uh, used in target devices, we had to switch to the miniaturized version, to the micro SD cards. Uh, design, uh, SD Max uh, provides uh, uh, many connections. First of all, board control, which we use uh, to, uh, to manipulate with the board itself. Uh, it, uh, since we uh, already uh, did most of it uh, based on USB connections, we decided that uh, it is the right way to go for SD Max as well. Uh, then, of course, we've got a reader for memory cards and we use actual memory cards, not some uh, flash drive built onto uh, SD Max board, but uh, actually memory card. It, uh, proved itself to be useful uh, since uh, we can now measure uh, the wear on uh, memory devices uh, and uh, this way we are as close to the uh, actual hardware as possible. Uh, of course, there are also connections uh, to the target device for a debug bridge uh, and to uh, connect uh, the a memory card to the target, and uh, the same for a host machine. Uh, there is uh, also uh, an uh, as, uh, power switch to uh, be able to remotely turn off or turn on a uh, target device. Together with uh, our micro SD card uh, demultiplexer uh, comes uh, a little uh, shell tool which we use uh, in our scripts and provides uh, access to uh, all, the, uh, uh, all the features of uh, SD Max board uh, uh, tasks which we uh, can put it uh, on this device. This way, uh, our former uh, workflow, which still required uh, manual work from release engineer, uh, could be uh, made fully automated. Uh, we no longer had to uh, download images, uh, 
then uh, put them on my uh, memory cards, put the cards back to the target devices, run the test, gather results and compare them with uh, our basic data. Uh, this little board uh, of our design allowed us uh, to make this uh, whole workflow uh, fully automated. Uh, we decided that since uh, it uh, provided uh, such an improvement in our workflow, uh, maybe it uh, could be useful for others as well. Uh, this is why schematics uh, for uh, boards and for the uh, expansion uh, cords to connect uh, card with actual hardware uh, are all available at uh, git server at uh, tizen.org. We also thought that uh, no uh, proprietary uh, software uh, should be uh, necessary to, to access those schematics. This is why we provide uh, them uh, in, uh, uh, in format readable by uh, open source software KiCad for uh, designing uh, circuit boards. Uh, all the information, uh, all the schematics and uh, some documentation is available at uh, Git server uh, at uh, git.tizen.org. Once we got it uh, all in place, uh, we, uh, we, be we began uh, to think what should be done next. And uh, since we uh, already had the whole workflow uh, fully automated, uh, we decided that we should focus on uh, having uh, the load on our setup uh, balanced uh, in uh, in a proper way. Uh, we decided that uh, since we expect already a higher load on our uh, test servers, we should uh, provide a solution for uh, determining which uh, images uh, will not uh, be useful for us to uh, reject them uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we also uh, uh, now need a more detailed way of uh, determining uh, differences between uh, tested images. Unfortunately, uh, just a difference uh, returned from uh, packages, uh, from a list of packages installed onto the uh, image for um, Tizen is not enough. Uh, and uh, having just a name and uh, hash uh, from uh, git server uh, is not really uh, a best solution to compare uh, two images. Uh, so there is a need for uh, improving uh, in, this, uh, in this matter. Uh, also, we plan uh, to improve uh, failure management. We want to get as uh, much data as possible even from uh, failed tests. Uh, what is more, uh, and is connected with it, we intend to have uh, a better management over our resources, over our uh, target devices, since uh, it is a uh, limited uh, number, uh, since there is limited number of, of uh, targets we test on. We also uh, currently uh, think of distributing uh, the system uh, in order to uh, be able to uh, test uh, on uh, much more uh, target devices on other examples for uh, those architectures uh, and uh, not to be uh, required to uh, run all the tests in, in a single laboratory. But uh, this is still yet to come. And to summarize uh, shortly what we've been working on, I would like to share with you that uh, currently uh, automation 
uh, does not need uh, new wheels. There is no uh, there is uh, no need for reinventing them. Uh, with uh, currently available tools such as uh, tools for configuration management for uh, um, advanced scheduling and queuing tasks or uh, for uh, uh, having uh, all the uh, packages for uh, Linux distribution repository rebuilt. Uh, there is uh, not much need for, for new uh, tools. Uh, what is more, uh, enforced limitations, which uh, um, currently uh, we stumbled upon in uh, external infrastructure, uh, can be quickly and easily overcome with uh, short scripts uh, and uh, uh, custom hardware, which we were uh, which we were not convinced that uh, will prove itself uh, useful uh, in the long run. Uh, can be uh, designing such custom hardware can be intimidating, but uh, it uh, pays off in the long term. Uh, just like uh, automating um, manual uh, processes. Uh, and uh, uh, that is all uh, what I've uh, got for you today. If you have got any question, I am more than happy to answer them. Which was uh, just, just about the relationship between this and... Oh, sorry, you have Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, just if you'd like to talk about any other uh, related projects, I had one one in mind, which was just I remember going to a talk uh, at a mini DebConf last year at ARM, uh, where they had a talk about um, uh, snowflakes, um, uh, where they they they'd actually been looking at uh, SD multiplexers and um, hadn't found one that worked. They didn't try to make one in house. Um, and therefore, were uh, uh, mainly talking about kernel CI. Um, oh. and, and and so I just wondered if you if you'd like to contrast those approaches and, uh, and whether, whether you've whether you've looked at uh, that was that was part of Linaris. Uh, so so we obviously uh, I guess. Um, uh, so would you like to um, have to um, differences between kernel CI and our solution, uh, or just uh, yes, yes. I, I guess just yeah, just a, if you just like to maybe outline some differences between the approach and why uh, oh, yeah, why sure. this one works better for, for your um, uh, so uh, as for uh, custom design of uh, of the board, uh, Linaro wanted uh, a different approach uh, to uh, to share uh, memory. Uh, between a target device and uh, host uh, machine. Uh, they uh, required uh, different uh, connections. Uh, on the only connection they uh, took into account was Ethernet. Uh, that was not the case for us. Uh, we uh, decided that a simpler uh, solution uh, might uh, be uh, easier to use. As for kernel CI, uh, it is focused on uh, other set of tests than we are. Uh, kernel CI provides uh, boot tests uh, and uh, not the test of, of the user space of the uh, systemd services that are uh, being run, uh, which we currently do. Uh, and uh, a kernel CI also focuses on uh, uh, kernelci.org focuses on gathering results from many different laboratories, whereas we focused on creating such laboratory for, for our purposes. Their solution is, is great. It provides much useful data, much useful information. I hope that our distributed laboratory would uh, would be um, as helpful as theirs but uh, our key focus uh, is far from theirs Thank you. Uh, I am not uh, sure if you're aware but uh, there are 
two, uh, two more uh, projects which uh, currently uh, involve uh, automated testing on uh, embedded systems. Uh, one is for uh, automotive grade Linux, uh, AGL for short, and uh, one is uh, uh, it was once uh, called uh, JTA, Jenkins Test Automation, but uh, if I recall correctly, it was recently renamed to Fuego, uh, if, if it rings a bell. Uh, we uh, compare our solution to those as well, uh, and, and we hope that uh, we, will able, we will be able to come up with uh, um, maybe more standardized uh, solution uh, to, to combine uh, all the needs uh, in, in, a, uh, in a one project. Uh, if uh, someone would like to uh, contact for further uh, information uh, or uh, for uh, more links to, to our source code or to schematics uh, of uh, our uh, boards, uh, here's the uh, email address uh, for me. Uh, I'm afraid I won't be able to uh, answer detailed questions about uh, uh, current design of uh, our uh, board, uh, but I will be able to uh, to point you uh, to the uh, actual designer. Thank you for your attention uh, and uh, uh, have a uh, good uh, return back home. <laughs>